Hi there Toyota owners. Today in your 2017 Toyota Sienna, we're going to be installing Red Arc's Tow Pro Elite Trailer Brake Controller. To assist us with this installation, we'll be using Kit ETBC7, which is a universal trailer brake controller installation kit. The Red Arc Tow Pro Elite is designed to operate trailers up to three axles, so this thing should be pretty much good to go for just about anything that you're wanting to use it for. It has zero, up to 10 with 10 being the maximum output, once it's calibrated, it will be solid blue. If you press in on the button, it will be the output. And red is going to be some visual feedback for you for the maximum output. You'll see if I, as I press it in and turn it down, it goes from a red color to kind of a purple and then finally blue, which is no output. Now this also has a user control mode, which is a different type of braking strategy where it's more similar to like a time delay style. This is the proportional mode which you would normally want to be in in most cases, but when you are off-roading and you're pulling a trailer and you uh, hit the brakes in the mud, you can slide and if your brakes lock up, it's not going to detect that that in momentum that you're slowing down and it may not apply the brakes very hard for your trailer. So in the user control mode, it's going to apply whatever you have it set to regardless. To put it in the user control mode, you would want to place it all the way in the zero position, hold the brakes, and double tap the button. You can see now it has turned green, letting you know it's in the user control mode. For our red arc, we're going to mount up our button in this general area here, and we're going to be mounting our controller in that area. So let's just take a look at some of the pieces you'll get in the kit. Here's the Topro Elite controller. That's the plug-in for the remote button that you're going to be able to control the unit with, and that's the main cables that's going to connect our controller to the output for our vehicle. You're going to have your power ground output as well as a brake signal input. So with our Sienna here, you're likely going to need to run your own wires for this. You likely don't have a factory tow package on this vehicle and we sell kit ETBC7 here at eTrailer which will provide you with a seven-way connector at the back as well as all the necessary wiring to turn a, an existing four-pole connector into a fully functioning seven-way which is going to be required to get our Red Arc brake controller to interface and output to your trailer. But let's get our controller and our buttons mounted up and we'll, we'll show you ETBC7 as well and how we're using that to get all the necessary connections hooked up. So before we mount our controller, I already have a good idea where we're gonna mount it. You wanna mount it at a, on a strong surface. It's not gonna vibrate too much, so you don't wanna go on too loose of a paneling because this is a proportional controller, so it is gonna use vehicle movement to help determine the most appropriate output. So a more solid, stable location is going to be better. We're actually going to use the bracket here next to our brake pedal, just to the right of the brake pedal arm right there. That's where we're going to be mounting it. We'll get to that in a minute. For our button, we're going to be mounting our button just right here below the power door off. Um, this is a pretty good location. We originally wanted to put it over here a little bit higher up, but there's actually a support bracket that runs across kind of like this. So we're not going to be able to put it in that location. Now to mount it up, to make it look nicer, we're going to be using this. This is a knockout that comes included with our kit. So with this guy, we can actually drill out a hole and mount it, and we're going to be mounting it here. I like using this um, because it does come with the Red Arc Elite because it does this a couple things for us. One, it gives us a panel that we know is an appropriate depth to mount our switch in because the switch here actually has a clicky little button. You can push it in and click it, and that's how you get the manual output. To, to go back, if you press the button, it'll just shoot an output out the back and whenever you have the knob set at. And if the panel is too thick that you're gonna mount your button in, uh, you may not actually be able to use the button press because of the thickness of the panel and it may also drag against your panel when you go to turn the adjustment of the knob. This is gonna give us the proper depth we need to mount it. We are gonna have to drill a bigger hole in our dash in order to mount a this, uh, this knockout versus like the tiny little hole we need for this. But you're just gonna get a more stable uh, and usable connection and the bezel kind of piece that's around the outside there um, it's just going to make it integrate and look nicer in your vehicle. So we're going to be putting it just below this piece here. So just kind of kind of eyeball roughly where we want to put it. We're going to use a you can either use a 15 16 or a one inch hole saw. The 15 16 is going to be a little bit more snug. Um, we're going to use a one inch though because if you see here at the top it's not completely round hole. There's a little pin at the top there and there's also this kind of shootout here at the bottom. Even with the one inch hole saw, we're still going to have to do some minor filing to get this to sit flush because of those. And we can actually use those as our kind of alignment 
to make sure that it's not crooked, uh, we'll use that to make sure it holds our uh, bezel and button upright. So we're gonna put it in roughly this location here. So we're gonna put it about right there. We want our hole then to be about here. I usually just hold the button up to the side of it to see where roughly the vertical is gonna end up. This looks pretty good here. This is about center of our, the button above us. So that should work out pretty nice for us about right there. So now we'll drill out our hole here. All right, and once we get drilled in like that, we're just gonna gently cut through this. Now, sometimes depending on the plastic paneling you've got, um, going in the forward direction really tears it up. It just depends on the type of material they're using. In which case, if you get up on it and it feels like it's really grabbing hard and it's like it's gonna tear the plastic rather than cut it, just flip your drill backwards and cut it in reverse. When it's plastic, a hole saw will still cut through it in reverse. This particular material feels like it's cutting fairly nice, so we're just gonna go in the forward direction because it'll cut a little bit faster. And there we go, we've got our cutout. We're gonna test our button there. Looks like it's gonna end up just below it. So we're just gonna use our round file here to file out that bottom area where our button requires that little extra. You don't wanna to go too crazy with it because it doesn't really need all that much. So just do a little bit at a time and recheck your button placement. And you can see we've switched to a file that has a corner on it for that notch. All right, so after we got it filed out there, we wanted to make sure our button still functions, trying to get it as close as possible because that cross brace does kind of curve right under that. And we're gonna need the clearance for our button to fit so you do kind of want to get it pretty close to this button. But do make sure it clicks in and out. You can should be able to see the top has a little red mark on it for when it's out, and that red mark disappears when it's in. Once you're satisfied with your fit, you can go ahead and pull your button holder back out of there. It's actually easier to mount our button and access the wiring if we do it this way and then just kind of push it in there. Um, so we're gonna just poke our wiring down and bring it down back towards our where we're gonna be mounting the module there. So this is the wiring for your button here. It's gonna be the black harness that has a white connector and a black connector. The black connector is going to be the side that goes to the module and the white connector is gonna be the side that goes towards our button. So we're gonna take the black side, poke it on through there and try to feed it down. There we go. Now we'll mount our button inside of our unit here. So. With the Topro Liberty, this actually works for both the Topro Liberty and the Topro Elite. With the Liberty, there's a small LED that kind of sticks out the top that would line up with that hole. With the Elite here, we don't have that, but it's still gonna illuminate, so you don't need to worry that it's got that hole there, the button's gonna cover it up. The gray sticker you see here is used when just mounting the button directly to your dash panel. If you're using this knockout here, then you don't use the gray sticker. We are gonna use the nut, however, so go ahead and grab the nut off of there. We're gonna slide our switch in, and this switch actually kinda, of, I believe it sits in here upside down. Yes, with the Topro Elite, it'll actually, to me it's upside down because the release connector's there like that, so I would consider that the top, but it actually wants to sit like this, so the larger portion towards the bottom. The Liberty would actually be the opposite if you were mounting that one in here, because um, that LED would be at the top that you would line up with that hole. So we're gonna slide that in like that, take our nut, push that in there, and then just snug it down. This is just plastic, so you don't really wanna tighten it all that tight. I think I'm probably just gonna tighten it by hand there, because you can't actually break it quite easily with the nut just, just being a plastic component. So that'll work out fine for us. We'll now plug in our button to the wire that we dropped down. Just line up the slots there with the slots on the button. Click that in. And now we can go ahead and insert our button. Again, just double check that that operates up there. If you are close to it like we are, make sure it works. After you got it all mounted up there, turn your button 
all the way to the left. And once you've got it full counterclockwise, that's gonna be the zero position. So just line it up to where zero is at the top. Slide your button on. You should be able to press it. If you're using this uh, knockout mount, it should press every time because you got the proper depth. But if you're mounting it directly to the panel, you do need to verify that uh, it still presses so that function works. If it doesn't, you're gonna have to just take a file or a Dremel and thin out the material until it's at an appropriate depth for mounting it. Bring our wiring over to where we're gonna put the module and we're gonna mount the module up. So the module here, I'm probably gonna plug the button in first and mount it towards the top because um, that's gonna be a little harder to access and that way our larger connector here will aim down and that's gonna be what's gonna be the wiring you're gonna use from kit ETBC7 to, to get this installed. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this wire in up here. I'm gonna double check myself and make sure if I need to route it over top of any components and things like that, I'm gonna route it over top of that stuff first and then we'll give it, get it plugged in there. It was actually a pretty clear path. There was nothing that I really needed to route it over. We're gonna probably use some cable ties and secure it to, uh, you have some duct work right here. We'll probably secure it to that duct work uh, to keep it away from any moving parts like our brake pedal components, our steering shaft, stuff like that. So the excess will just secure there. We're gonna plug it in to our module here. Just like that, make sure you hear it click. Shouldn't be able to pull it out of there easily. And now our module, we're gonna mount to this paneling right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just use some long cable ties to secure it. So we've got some 14 inch cable ties here that we're gonna use and we're gonna secure it right in this location. I'm gonna go ahead and secure the module and then I'll let you look at it after I secure it because once I get my body and hands up in here, you're probably not gonna see anything until, uh, until it's all said and done. So here it is on the paneling, or on the mount kind of right here by the brake pedal. You can see we just ran our cable ties through it and they ran around the plate there. And then the same thing with this one, there's actually a small hole at the top right corner of where the module is in this plate and we went in that hole and then came down and then back around. There's two slits in your module. We made sure to push our zip tie up through one and then back through the other and you can see it's quite secure here. This shouldn't give us any issues with false activations. So now we're going to go ahead and take our connector that comes in our kit and plug it in. The Topro Elite here does come with this connector and that button knockout but if you, want with, if you go with the Liberty version um, you, does not come with this or the knockout, so you would have to purchase those separate. But with our Elite One, it does come with that. Now there's four wires on here. You've got a red, which is the brake signal input. That's gonna come from our brake switch here, and it's gonna let the module know when we're pressing the brake. The blue wire here is going to be the brake module output. So when we do hit the brake and it goes to activate our trailer brakes, it's gonna send it out this blue wire. It's gonna go all the way back to the seven-way connector to activate our trailer brakes. We'll be using kit ETBC7. And the white wire that I ran in here is in kit ETBC7. We'll be using that to get this wire all the way to the back. I've already routed this wire, but I'll show you the path I took to get it back there. Next, we have a white wire. This is our ground wire. The module needs power and ground to function. And then our black wire here is going to be our power wire. And we're gonna be using kit ETBC7 to help us get that power wire. That's gonna be the black wire here. I've already ran this. This is gonna to go towards our battery. Um, we do get circuit protection in kit ETBC7 to have proper circuit protection. So if we have any shorts, it's not gonna cause any issues. So we're gonna go ahead and just start connecting them now. We'll probably hang on to this guy for a minute because that one's gonna hook up a little bit different. Same with our ground wire. And let's take care of the two that are gonna use our kit ETBC7 here. So we'll start with the blue one. Go ahead and peel back the end on there. It does come pre-stripped for you, which is a little piece so you can just pull it off. We're only gonna take a butt connector and put it on there. You don't get a butt connector with your module, but if you've got kit ETBC7, you'll get some in there. And we can use that to make our connection there. And then on the other side, we're gonna take the white wire that we've run in here. I've got more than I need, so I'm gonna trim off some of this excess. I do wanna leave enough excess for future potential repairs, different brake controllers that they may wanna try out, anything else. You just never know what somebody's gonna to wanna to do. And this will also let us kinda of move it up out of the way and mount it up higher where it's uh, gonna stay away from our customer's feet there. So we'll trim that off, strip this end back, slide this into the other end of our butt connector here and then crimp it on down.
All right, now we're just gonna do the same thing with the black wire here, so our positive wire. That's gonna go to the black wire from Kitty TBC7 that we routed. Now I do not have this wire currently hooked to the battery. I've routed it towards it, but um, you don't wanna hook it up just yet because if the wire is hooked to the battery, it's live. And if it touches any exposed metal here on our wire were to touch a grounded uh, surface or component, you'd, you'd see a little spark show there. We don't wanna avoid that. So just again, don't hook it up to the battery. We'll do that at the very end. That's what I prefer to hook up the battery. It's kind of like my last step. All right, so we've got that stripped back. Grab another butt connector, slide it over the black, crimp it on down, and we'll slide the black wire from kit ETBC7 that we routed over here, crimp it down, all right, we've got those connections made now. So next we're gonna hook up our red wire here. The red wire is gonna to connect to our stoplight switch, which is actually located right here. Um, so here's your brake pedal, follow the arm up. You'll see a spring, just to the left of the spring is the stoplight switch. Now the stoplight switch does have a little piece of wire loom on it. Just peel off the electrical tape and then you can peel off the wire loom to expose the wires in there. There's four wires inside. You can see we got a white, violet, green, and blue. The white, violet, and green are not the ones we want. The blue one is the one that we want. So there's a couple of different ways you could make that connection. You could cut the wire and add this to it and then reconnect it back together. Um, but a really nice method is to use a quick splice. You want to use one that is red to make your connection. Red is designed for very thin gauge wires. We can tell this wire is very thin, looking to be like a 22 gauge, maybe a 20 gauge. It's pretty small, uh, but this will slide over it and cut through the sheathing and connect it. And then we can put a spade terminal on our red wire and slide it into there to make our connection. So when using these, you will just want to use a pair of uh, pliers to just squeeze it over the wire. That's why it's one of the easiest ways to make our connection and then we're really not modifying our wire in any way. We're not having to cut it and worrying that we're going to make our vehicle not function with the way it used to there. So here I'm taking the quick splice, sliding it over blue wire, closing the quick splice. Then once I've closed it, we're going to take some pliers or oftentimes I prefer channel locks. I just get a better squeeze on them with these and then just kind of squeeze it together. Uh, that'll make its connection. And it should stay shut. If it locks shut like that, then you know you've made a good connection. We're just gonna twist it around to make it easier to access there. And then our red wire, peel back the sheathing off of there, slide our spade terminal over the red wire and crimp it down. This will then just insert into the quick splice. Now this quick splice doesn't come in your kit, so you have to purchase this separately, but this is, you, this is how I would recommend making this connection. And this will just push in here, right up in there. Make sure you get it pushed all the way in. And then I usually take some electrical tape or something and wrap it around there just so we don't have any exposed uh, area of any bare metal there and we don't need a bunch just just enough to slide around any of those exposed metal surfaces and that'll work out fine there so now we've got our white wire left this is our ground wire let's go ahead and take one of the ring terminals this does come in your ETBC 7 kit slide that in there Crimp it onto our wire. And now I always prefer to hook it to an existing fastener if I can find one that we know is gonna be connected to a metal surface. And there's actually one located right over here. It's plastic here on the outside, but the surface behind it is metal. So it's threading directly into metal. We're gonna go ahead and just remove that fastener with a 10 millimeter socket. And then to hide the wire, I'm actually going to pull out on the panel just a little bit. We're going to take our fastener, push it through, slide our ring terminal on it, 
and then thread it back in. And that way it'll hide the wire behind the plastic paneling. It'll also smash it more tightly up against the metal. All right, so we've got all of our connections here on the inside made. All this wiring, we're just gonna be tucking up under the dash there and securing it to keep it out of this area. We'll come back and do that here after we verified that we've got everything connected. All right, so now we've got all our connections made. So we do need to go out underneath the hood to finish hooking up the power wire. And we're gonna be securing this all behind the dash, making it look pretty, but I recommend leaving them hang down until you've verified that it works and then clean it up. So here we are underneath the hood now. Our circuit breakers that we mounted up, we mounted here. This comes with kit ETBC7, not with your Topro Elite. And this is gonna provide us with our battery power for the module. And in kit ETBC7, it also provides you with an auxiliary um, power output at your seven way connector. This is what this one is here. This circuit breaker here is our 40 amp breaker. That has a wire that's going all the way back to the seven way to charge the battery on your trailer or operate some accessories like your, uh, like your power jack potentially. And then we mounted up the 30 amp breaker in our kit right here next to it. This is the black wire that routes inside. I just kind of routed it behind the uh, brake reservoir. It goes over and then our grommet is pretty much straight back behind the boot here where your air filter attaches and it's kind of just straight back in there. So now we're gonna take the rest of the black wire that we've got after routing our wiring from the seven-way connector up here and also routing our black wire inside to power our module. This should be enough wire left to reach from our circuit breakers to our battery positive. So I went ahead and folded it in half because we're gonna need a separate power wire for each one. We'll cut this in half. We're then gonna strip back each end of each of these pieces of wire. After we strip it back, we're gonna take the smaller ring terminals that come in your kit with Kitty TBC7 and crimp those on one side. The smaller ring terminals are designed to go onto the circuit breakers. So you can see that I've already got some that have those on there. And then we're gonna grab our other small ring terminal here slide that on there as well and crimp this one on. After making our connection there, we're just gonna attach each one of these to the bronze post of our circuit breakers. The bronze posts are labeled battery and the silver post is labeled load. So we wanna put the wire that's gonna to go to the battery positive on the bronze side. So I'm just removing the nut from there. Be careful not to drop the nut. Take your ring terminal, slide it in place on there, and then reinstall the nut. I usually leave it just a little bit loose until I get the other side near the battery. Again, we're still not gonna hook it to the battery until it's kind of the very last step. Just kind of routing it around over towards our component, see if it better off this looks like we're better off going towards the front of the housing and then towards the battery so we're gonna hook up our other one the same way and then we're gonna grab a 3 8 socket to secure these nuts to our circuit breakers so that way they can't rotate anymore but usually wait to figure out what the best pass is kind of the path to route them before I finalize securing them These don't need to be crazy tight, just tight enough that where you can't rotate it like that and that's good. You can break the circuit breaker if you over tighten it. So now both of these are gonna come over here to our positive. We're gonna strip back these ends and connect this to a ring terminal as well, but these are gonna be the larger ring terminals that come in your kit. And again, that's kit ETBC7 for, uh, for these circuits here. And now we can go ahead and make our connection here to our battery. Now, it looks like when we go to make this connection here, I'm gonna see if we can't slide this off a little bit more, because currently if we were to disconnect it, yeah, we're gonna, have, we're gonna disconnect from there and we'll slide our ring terminal right on top. That should work out fine for us. Just kind of getting that out of the way so we could assess how it looks there. We're gonna use a 12 millimeter socket to remove the nut.
keeping a little bit of pressure downward on it just so it doesn't disconnect. We'll then take our ring terminal, slide it in place over the stud for each one, and then reinstall our nut. You can then slide your cover back over top and bend it as necessary to click it back into place there. So now at that point, our connections are all made. Now we are gonna cover routing our wiring to the back. So um, we'll show you the rest of our wire as it goes back to our seven way. The white wire that we routed inside is coming out of this gray harness here. And that's also running down and going to the back. So this is the path we went down. We just kind of followed this module harness that's right there. Whenever routing wires, I always try to follow factory wiring because when routing wires, you wanna make sure you avoid anything that's moving like your steering and suspension components and anything excessively hot like your exhaust and factory wiring is already gonna be routed in, those, in a location that's gonna avoid those things. So we're now underneath the vehicle. Now this is the wire that we ran back and you can see it's this gray here. The black and the white wire are inside this duplex here that uh, this protects it, this gray sheathing. So we didn't separate it out until we got un up under the hood there. Now you do want to run this wire before making that final connection to the battery. Ours is already run, um, but you wouldn't want to do this first before making that last ring terminal connection there. So it goes down from where we showed you there, and then it comes down. We just poke it up above this paneling here. We stay above this paneling until it comes out here at the back of the paneling. We then go on the side of our fuel tank, kind of poking it above each of the straps so that way that holds it up. Once we get to the rear of the fuel tank, we're going to go above this component here, and this is where our wiring is coming out right here, just above it. We'll go above our rear suspension. The black tubing you see going across here is your parking brake cable. Uh, the cable actually runs inside the sheathing, so you're okay to use some cable ties on it to secure it there, because we want to keep it away from our suspension there. We then go towards the center, do the same thing, just kind of wrap it around this harness to help keep it away from that suspension and uh, your rear axle here, the uh, CV shaft going over, that is gonna rotate, so you wanna stay away from those things. And then we get over here and run it up above the paneling all the way till we make our way over here to the back. So in your ETBC7 kit, you're also gonna get a seven-way connector here. Now we mounted that to a long bracket that you can get here at e-trailer. E now the long bracket does not come with ETBC7. The long bracket will come with a cable clamp that you see here and this long piece that has pre-drilled holes that will allow you to mount a seven-way bracket directly to it. This way we don't have to drill into the vehicle to mount it. This also helps keep it kind of high because with our Sienna here, it's so low to the ground that uh, you do have a slight chance of that getting damaged. So we're actually gonna loosen this up just a little bit and push this connector as high as we can and then secure it because ground clearance is a, an issue on these Siennas. Now our seven ways just gonna mount with four screws. Those come into your kit. You also get two screws with a long bracket if you buy them for mounting the seven way connector, which is just this tiny little piece here. And then the four way actually just slides in the side like that. Now coming out of the back, you can see the wiring here. This is the back of our seven way. Coming out of the back of the seven way, you're gonna get a yellow wire, which you have, I can hook it up if you want. It's an optional wire. This will hook to your reverse light circuit. If you need reverse lights, this is usually only hooked up though for like boat trailers and stuff. Um, things that have a surge coupler for like a reverse lockout. The black wire coming out of this is going to be the auxiliary power wire. So we're gonna hook that to the black wire. You can see there's our duplex where we separated uh, the black and the white out from the gray. So hook black to black. And then the white wire that we hooked to the blue wire on our Red Arc controller, is gonna hook to the blue wire here on our seven way connector. Now you might notice that these butt connectors look different than the one we used inside and the one that comes already on your ETBC7 connector. We shut those off and then we put heat shrink butt connectors on there so we can shrink them down and seal up and prevent any moisture from getting in there. You'll also notice here that I did have to extend this white wire. The white wire that you'll get off the end of the seven way will have a ring terminal on it at about this point. But we didn't want to drill straight up. This is our trunk pan and that can allow moisture and potentially exhaust gases to get into the cab of the vehicle if you were to drill right into the trunk pan. Um, you also have a spare tire potentially mounted right there and you don't want to drill a screw into your spare tire. 
So we extended the wire. If you need extra wire, you can buy some here at E-Trailer. We just ran it over above this paneling, down this direction, and then added a ring terminal to it, and then used a self-tapping screw to run it right into the frame, because this way it's not gonna be in the vehicle. The frame here has a cavity that's still outside, um, so that way we don't have to worry about any kind of exhaust gases entering the vehicle, and same with moisture or anything like that. So kind of extended that just to get it further away did plug in a trailer simulator into the seven-way connector at the back. If you plug in your trailer, you should get feedback from your knob where it's flashing green and blue, and it should be primarily green with a short flash of blue when you first fire it up. That's just letting you know that it needs to be calibrated. It'll calibrate regardless if the module detects a trailer plugged in, but I like to have the trailer simulator plugged in because without a trailer or a simulator being plugged in, you won't get the video feedback. So we're gonna go ahead and pull forward now and just drive the vehicle until we get it to program. So just go in a straight line, hit your brakes, then go in a straight line again and hit your brakes. And this can take up to about 20 presses. We are getting a beep there because we do have our lift gate open to allow the wiring for our trailer simulator to be connected and the simulator module be inside the back. So it's just beeping at us because we had the lift gate slightly cracked. And you'll notice as we're driving it here, the time that it is green versus blue is becoming more blue. Once it hits solid blue, the module is programmed and the calibration is complete. And at that point, you are ready to go. So we're just gonna do this again. I found that it usually takes me about eight to nine presses in a lot of instances to get this to activate and fully calibrate. We're just gonna do another circle. Um, whenever you're turning, you really don't wanna hit it there. It's not gonna really help it. And the reason we're doing this is to help it learn its position because you can mount the module in any orientation in the vehicle, but it doesn't know what orientation it's in until it is able to feel the inertia of the forward travel. So that's why we're just helping it learn its position right now. And we're really close there. Got almost no green left. And it looks like we have now hit solid blue. So at this point, the module is now calibrated. It is now ready to operate. And that completes our installation of Red Arc's Tow Pro Elite trailer brake controller on our 2017 Toyota Sienna.